I'm Peter Reinhardt. Welcome to Pizza Quest. And I'm here today with uh, Jelana Miller and Ahmad Butler. We are going to have the Miller Butler experience today. And I, what I'm going <laughs> to bring you up to date on what that means to me, because I haven't seen you guys since, uh, well, for a number of months. The last time we were together right. was in Napa, California at a pizza competition where we were all competing for, for prize money. And uh, yeah. Uh, and for various reasons, neither of us won, and, right. I, think, and I always felt like you, like, like you got screwed by the oven. <laughs> oh yeah, we did a little bit, but that's all right. <laughs> and, and, and I had my own technical difficulty. I know why I didn't do as well as I had hoped, and I know, and I felt like you know, unfortunately, uh, your oven uh, hadn't been set properly for you, and so, and and that's part of the game when you're in these competitions. Right. Right. So I hope you're going to do it again because I think they're going to have that competition again. It's the California. Milk Advisory Board Pizza Contest. So hopefully you'll enter again. Uh, yeah. I don't know if my wife will let me enter again or not. <laughs> but it was fun. And it was fun. It was and fun, right? It made yeah. it so much fun for me. Was I got to meet you guys. And we we got to have dinner together and 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 yeah. get to know each other That's a little nice bit. And, and, and uh, I wanted to share with our, with our viewers a little bit about your story and let them know, you know, what Miller Butler is and, uh, and, and what you're doing and, uh, and how you got there. So could you give us a little sort of backstory on, on, on your whole adventure? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Miller Butler, she's the Miller. I'm the Butler. She likes to say it's kind of our <laughs> stick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, staff uses me every time. It works. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good yeah, hook. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. But uh, yeah, we started in 2020, um, sort of at the end of the pandemic um pretty early actually pretty yeah i guess so huh we will we originally started we were making pasta mm -hmm. it was sort of our uh pandemic um hobby in the beginning you know once you nobody's working we're just stuck in the house we just got married right right at the beginning of the pandemic uh -huh. so uh -huh. it was sort of the honeymoon phase and we were <laughs> rolling up dark nellies and folding uh, farfelle and just making pasta all day long and we're like we ah, can do this nothing like cacio pepe on a honeymoon right <laughs> right exactly yeah that was our honeymoon making pasta yeah. lots of pasta so we started out making pasta and um we really thought we were going to be like a big pasta company you know what i mean we were yeah. like visualizing that we're like pasta pasta we we're all our like initial sort of branding and stuff was surrounded by pasta because we love it mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah and, and sort of long story short it got to a point where we're like man we cannot make enough pasta to make any money <laughs> we right. we've got to do something else you know we have to switch the theory to meet reality <laughs> right <laughs> exactly and the world had just sort of started opening up and we found this little outdoor flea market that was uh we were going to sell, go out there and sell pasta, but we we're like, man, is there a way we could like maybe cook the pasta or sell some hot food or do something else? And and he but you said, both yeah, had maybe culinary, you both had culinary backgrounds, so but when you got into it, right, and, and in in different yeah. ways, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I worked as a private chef for about fifteen years and came from a family of chefs. Or my ah. father's a chef and. Um, mm -hmm. And he was in the hotel industry. Hotel industry. He was a food and beverage manager when the pandemic actually started. But before then, I spent 15 years bartending and just sort of being a home chef kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So we both enjoyed cooking. Mm -hmm. That was part of what, what I fell in love with was uh, watching you, the chef. You knew what you were getting into, at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. It was the perilous an path ahead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I grew so, up making a little bit, so that helped. But mm -hmm. yeah, we sure. called this market and we said, you know, we need, can we make hot food? What can we make? So we could do pasta. I even threw it out there. We had this tiny little um, uni. kind of beat up uni. Mm. It continued. They don't even make it anymore. Really. <laughs> the early um, uni. <laughs> right. And I said, we can make pizza. And he said, yeah, do pizza. So yeah. we've never done a pizza pop up before. All right. So, all right, let's go. Okay. That following weekend, we just started prepping and went out there. And yeah, I think what did we sell? Like maybe like 50. The first time, yeah, it was pretty, like, like pretty 50 small. Pizzas. 50 yeah. pizzas is a lot of pizzas. Yeah. Yeah. Out of was, a small little oven. Out of that small little oven. Yeah. Absolutely. We, we were like, yeah. yeah, we were stoked. We made like, 
I don't know, I think like 700, something like that. Yeah, we're like, all right, we're going to be able to... It was enough to cover the rent, you know? We're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We did it. You know? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> then you got hooked. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. <laughs> we're like, we'll be here next weekend. It was yeah. a, it was honestly a financial relief. And it was fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. Not fell in love with making pizza right away. It was just the two of us. There was no one taking orders. I'd take order, turn around, shape a pizza. He'd fire it. Right. Um. Yeah. And it was, it was a lot of fun. We, you know, it, we tinkered with the recipe a lot. We had um, her dad's pizza recipe. Mm-hmm. And it's a great recipe. It just had some brown sugar in it. And we were just, just like out in the wild. And on a hot day, this dough was just like going everywhere on us. Yeah, you know? yeah. It was just like, we're like, man, we got to make some adjustments. And yeah, well, yeah. Well, something's feeding this yeast and it's going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Watched a lot of YouTube videos and just like so you really like, were you kind of like were self taught in that regard. You learned the hard yeah, way by sure. trial and error and then yeah. and then self study. Yeah. So, so what were kind of That's some of the tweaks that you that. said again? What were some of the tweaks that you made to get that dough under control? Um. Well, I messed with the yeast and sugar levels for yeah. sure. Um. And then eventually got rid of the sugar altogether. Um, we did, um, just like fermentation time. I've noticed like if we fermented a little longer, it was, it didn't like, you know, a little older, it kind of relaxed and uh-huh. re- refrigeration time was a thing we tweaked a lot. Um, yeah. And then just realizing like, you know, being outdoors temperature and all these things came into play. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was, we even like froze them we like froze them all at once. in the very beginning oh yeah that was a that was an interesting hack oh, that was a mess. we had individually frozen dough balls we thought because it was really hot at los feliz flea and so we thought yeah. okay by the time we get there it'll be that'll be thawed out we'll be able to work with them and we pull them out individually but some of them just yeah. still frozen and free oh boy <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 but he really kind of went in on the research yeah. and um yeah, I mean, just kind of watch her, too, because she was shaping the dough. So I wouldn't tell her, like, I was doing something different this week, you know? <laughs> and I just kind of, like, see how she reacted. And she'd be like, what's wrong with this dough this week? You're like, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Hey, got it. <laughs> yeah. Go back to your own recipe. <laughs> what did you do to this dough? <laughs> right. She'd just be like, what's happening? Or she'd be like, oh, this feels beautiful. And I'm like, all right, cool. Got so it. is this like you're doing this at like farmer's markets? Is that where we're at? Yeah, happening? a little farmer. It's just a and- little flea market. They would sell like um, antique clothes mostly oh, or yeah. like clothes and different things. But we was, we were there and a couple other little food vendors were there. And mm-hmm. you were baking yeah, them in your, okay. were you baking them in your uni or did you, had you graduated to a bigger oven by then? No, we were still in the the uni. It was like a modified uni. It was really cool because you remember back in the days they had the long stacks on them on top. Yeah, yeah. And her dad like cut it off. He was like, it's not getting, <laughs> it wouldn't stay hot. So he cut this thing off and sort of like put a little plate on the top. And it's uh-huh. funny now it looks like what the newer unis look like, you know. And so we use that for a while. <laughs> right, right, yeah. for sure. Yeah, but it was yeah, it was good. Yeah, we went. I. Uh... I will never forget the day. Obviously, we outgrew that at the market. We started uh, gaining popularity there, um, just from going every weekend. And our our pizza was improving, and um, the market was expanding as well. So a lot more people were coming. And the the oven put us in a bad way a few times. Yeah. One day it was windy. Uh, ah. Yeah. There's hundreds of vendors there, you know, and it just kept blowing the flame out, and we couldn't. Not only could we not sell pizzas, we could not leave for like six hours. We just had to stand there and be like, I'm sorry, we can't make you pizza. It was just, it was kind of heartbreaking, you know? Yeah. And I, on that day we went home and I was just like, man, I, we cannot be going home with all this dough and product. Yeah. And we were walking up the stairs to our house and I looked down on the pavement below and I was, cause I'm just brainstorming, you know? And I said, let's just sell pizza down there tomorrow. Yeah. Let's do that. And I was like, okay. I'm like, we got to do something with this. Yeah. And so that you, you following just to do it right down there outside your house. Yeah. yeah. I was like, we got to uh-huh. go rogue. We got to just do this. Yeah. Okay. Cause <laughs> it was tight. Money was really tight. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, ne- ne- so, what's the saying? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we found that out a few times in this process. <laughs> yeah. For, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. We were just, so we're- you know, 
it was a roll of the dice and we did we set up the next day um yeah. only sold a couple of pizzas we sold like 25 yeah it was nice yeah, yeah but uh really kind of got to know our neighborhood on that day or started to and <laughs> we're like wow this is some amazing people around right. here we love this yeah. and people were so grateful right. um we have a big spanish speaking population around here and they were just like thank you for the fresh food you know um and for people who are wondering who don't know you uh, you're you're yeah. in, in uh, southern california we're in san pedro yeah. where you guys are in san pedro california it's the uh the harbor area so we're literally uh, blocks away from the uh, L.A. Harbor, the port of L.A. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you 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 look down the street and you see these giant like shipping containers just sort of floating by. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome yeah. town. We live in a giant beat up house. Yeah, <laughs> wow. it's, uh, yeah. from the outside, it looks haunted. <laughs> yeah, but it's also um, sounds like in a very diverse neighborhood too. With the very, very diverse. diverse working class neighborhood. Um, there's not a lot of food options around here. A lot of liquor stores, but not a lot uh -huh. of food options. Yeah. So, so yeah. So when we start setting up and selling pizzas, like on the sidewalk, people were just like, "Wow!" <laughs> you know, they couldn't believe it. Like usually it's tacos or or hot dogs. So people, uh -huh. we have pizzas, and it was just. It felt yeah. so good too, I think, for people to just be, especially within your community, to be so excited about having that fresh food that mm -hmm. even though we didn't make, make much money, I was just like, let's do this. Let's yeah. do this every Sunday. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And, cool. um, yeah. Yeah. and it really blossomed. It really did. Mm -hmm. We stopped going, stopped driving out to LA and just started just we setting up. Flyers. <laughs> So, on the block so instead of the uh, what is it instead of the mountain going to muhammad the, the muhammad came to right. the mountain that's, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right yeah and it was really cool it was a really amazing um experience we got to know the community mm -hmm. um and we eventually couldn't keep up with the uni anymore right. and my father loaned us uh -huh. <laughs> yeah he loaned us one of his ovens i think it's ours now right um, but he built a, a mobile oh, okay. oven a mo on wheels or yeah um yeah 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 it's actually really cool a very unique design it's a diamond plate diamond plate steel oh and with steel on the bottom and uh heats up really quick i mean we we're up and going in like an hour and a half you know two hours and you could do like two, three pizzas in there if you really, if you really like got to, if you're really pushing. But yeah, that was, that was a lifesaver for sure. He came down with a quarter, you know, a little quarter, quarter wood and just like, here you go, have at it. And yeah, it changed the game entirely. Yeah. Our pizzas well, well, were better, everything. So th there's just a great learning curve happening for you guys. But uh, let me back up for one second. So is your father still in the restaurant business or the food business, or does he just is yeah. he all these toys from his days in the in the game? <laughs> both. No, both. I think. <laughs> oh yeah, I think. Uh, I think he's gonna be in it. You know, till the end. <laughs> he's a <laughs> he's a chef through and through. His name's Chef Frank Miller. Um, he's gotten really into like doing. Uh, um cooking videos online, you know, tutorials and things like that. And he's really good at it. Look um, up but he, it. yeah, yeah, he kind of, he grew up like, like the old school chefs did and learned in the kitchen, didn't go to culinary school, was trained by French chefs, uh, brutal French chefs. Yeah, right. like, trained like a brutal French chef. <laughs> That's it all. Dramatic, you know what I mean? But it's yeah. okay. We have a great food relationship. We go old good. school, right? Right. Old school, yeah. yeah. So, so it sounds like he's kind of like a, uh, a, a not a silent, a not so silent partner in your operation. Yeah, I, I like I like to call him our uh, consigliere. <laughs> See, there you go. That's perfect. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's yeah, we definitely hit him up when we have questions and things and. He's always willing to uh, <laughs> offer his advice and answers. Yeah, so it's, got a lot of good that. it's nice to have somebody that you can go to who you trust to who yeah. believes in yeah, you. Sure. Yeah, so, sure. so, so you, so you, you got over that hurdle, and suddenly now you're in business, and you've got a little bit bigger yeah. oven, and uh, and then now you're like full time into. Um, is it a, would you call it a catering business, or, or what, what? How would you define the the business of Miller Butler now? um yeah we're we're now we're definitely full service sure. catering yeah yeah and um and you go we, to, you go on site you can take the oven on site to other people's locations yeah yep we yeah. Sure can. so we started doing that we 
and uh, we started doing like the brewery sort of circuit a little bit and yeah, like yeah. popping up in different places where in different businesses and you know, local people who would come out and see us, they'd be like, hey, can you, would you set up in front of our shop? We're doing whatever mm -hmm. this weekend. And we're like, yeah, let's do it, you know? And so we kind of became sort of known for bringing, bringing the crowd to different nice. businesses in the area. And so that's been really, really good for us. And we have, we definitely been evolved into a, a catering outfit. Sometimes I think we do too much, but. You still do pasta? Is pasta part of the mix? Pasta yeah. is definitely pasta part of the falls right in there beautifully. We do live pasta stations. We do full grazing tables. We do, um, you know, we do brunch. We do, and we continue to expand. And I think people recognize that we can do a lot. <laughs> yeah. So they say, okay, right. can you do this? Can and we go, this? okay. Yeah, sure. Somebody so if they're having like a party and they want to they want to hire you to be their caterer, they can design a menu with you and create something. Yeah. yeah. Unique, exactly. something unique. Yeah, um, we've started doing the uh, live paella, the hundred centimeter really? paella pan. <laughs> those are pasta and those paella. Are really That's a combo for you. Yeah. Pasta pizza. Those are really fun. Yeah, the three peas. Wow. The three peas. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we ought to do that. But you can never go wrong with paella. Paella is such a great party food, you know. Yeah, totally. it's a crowd. It's like the oven. They see when you can see it happening. People really enjoy it. You know, they yeah. really get to it. And it's been so interesting too. This like because a lot of people have picked up since the pandemic, sort of picked up making pizzas. Everybody comes to us and they're like, "Oh, cool oven!" Like, I have an oven at home, and then they want to talk to you about dough and all these yeah. different things. It's like, "Oh, cool!" Like, <laughs> yeah, everyone's doing it. Yeah, so it's really fun. you become yeah. the, the the expert for them. Then you become their mentors. <laughs> yeah, in a certain way. Yeah, it's really it's really so the, interesting. So has, has the business grown through word of mouth then when you do an event does that lead to other events that lead to you know more people calling you and saying can you do that for me yeah for sure yeah. we've been really blessed um we've had a really significant amount of growth since we started and pretty rapid um you know we've been hustling we've definitely been grinding really hard mm -hmm. and a lot of it started just like right there on the block when we were doing our pop-ups mm -hmm. it's really interesting and it's yeah. i think this clients and customers and part of our sort of community have become like really special and fun because you know they're the og block customers right. <laughs> and now we're doing you know catering events for them or catering events for you know someone they know and um but yeah so we started just doing that and have and now now we're a preferred vendor at a couple of places we get you know, um, we have a long way to go, but we're blessed to be where we are. We've been yeah. pretty much full booked and busy. Yeah. And yeah. she's done a great job with our uh, social media. So a lot uh -huh. of a lot of stuff on Facebook. We've really built a really cool organic following. Not Facebook, on Instagram, really. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she's done a really good job with that. And yeah, we get a lot of business off of Instagram. It's really so amazing. If people want to yeah. see your, any of your Instagram, what's the, what do they go to? What's the, what's the handle? Miller Butler or what? Yeah, yeah. Miller Butler underscore SP. Like San Pedro. Yeah. Right. Oh, San Pedro. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm making a note of that. Um, so we try to keep it authentic, organic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fine. Um, but it's been really helpful in just communicating where we're going to be. Our process, where we're going to be. Also, in, in promoting other local businesses, because that's kind of something that's important to us. We're sure. a big part of the small business community. And yeah. um, it, we have a really good one here. And so we try to sort of um, collaborate with other food businesses, other businesses of all types, you know what I mean? Just to sort of perpetuate growth within the community. Yeah. Well, I think that's a key word there, community, because we talk about that a lot on Pizza Quest is, you know, the yeah. Pizza Quest itself is as is, is part of a community that I call the um, our fellow fire freaks, you know, and, and uh, right, yeah. the community. And then, and, and then there's the bread community, the breadheads. And I mean, there's lots of these, but I think it's community is the thing that we all have in common and that why it's so compelling to so many people, mm -hmm. because if you knew going in, how hard you were going to have to work to make this happen, right. you might not do it unless right. there was some other intangible reward beyond just the financial reward. And I think, you know, it seems right. the more we explore it, the more it seems like it's, it's connecting with these people and, and, and being part of something that's bigger than yourself. Yeah, for sure. And going up to Napa was really a big part of us, like seeing the pizza community, mm -hmm. you know, we, 
we had known some of the bigger names in the bread and sort of pizza world, but then like to get to meet like Chris Decker or Audrey or yourself, you know, it was really yeah. like really cool and interesting. Mm -hmm. to, like be like Tony, ah, Tony, right? Yeah, yeah it was, that was cool. exciting we, for us. Because we were up against like, you, know, we were there were twelve finalists. You, you, we represented yeah. two of the twelve finalists, and we were up against some world champions. I mean, I'd never, I had never yeah. been pizza competition. I write about pizza and I know a lot about pizza and I advise on pizza, but I would never compete against these guys. But I, yeah. I had I took my shot. And, uh, right. and and you guys were kind of like you, you're the, the new face on the on the scene, and but we're seeing yeah. all these people who we kind of looked up to for years and years, and yeah. uh, kind of intimidating to be up against them. And and they didn't all win either. In fact, the winner of the whole thing was one of the lesser known peoples, which who we've had on the yeah, show. Right. So mm -hmm. that was kind of cool that uh, to see yeah, that getting sure. the competition, you know, all bets are off. It's, it doesn't matter how well known you are, you've got to perform that day and and nail right. it. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, that was let's a lot talk, of fun. Let's talk about that before we forget the because uh, I I won't get back to this. If we don't cover it now. What did you make? What was your pizza on that for you? Because we had to enter a pizza by you know the concept. We had to send in a recipe, and then it was twelve people were chosen to come and actually perform it that day. What was yours? Yeah, so ours was well, we call it El Chicano, but for the sake of the uh, uh, the tournament, they called it El Angelino. We sort of had to change the name of it. <laughs> But you were in the California. Were you in the California category, or the what was the uh, yeah the Calmex? Cal Cal oh, you were the Calmex. There was a Calmex category. Yeah. There was the uh, yeah. and it's uh, one of a uh, yeah. And so while I'm on the sort of dough end of things, Gelada's like the creator of the flavors that uh -huh. we sort of put uh -huh. pizzas. Mm -hmm. A lot of cool, interesting stuff. So on that one, um, we we linked up with a local chorizo maker, the Churi Man who makes unbelievable, I think he might be one of the best in the country, definitely the best in LA. Yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. And he's, wow. yeah, and he's right up the street from us. So Can we Shory give him Man. a shout out? Let's give him a shout out. Yeah, in case yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You got to check out Shory Man. He's uh, yeah. artisanal chorizo, mm -hmm, right one here. of a kind, right here in San Pedro. Um, yeah, so many different flavors. Can you say the, name of his, yeah. say the name of it again for people who want to look for him? It's called Chori Man. Yeah. Chori, Chori, like chorizo. Chory, yeah, Chory, 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 Chory man. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah Chory, okay. Man. Make note of that, folks. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. tell them about the pizza you created with that. Yeah. <laughs> magnificent chorizo. Yeah. So I actually kind of that one came up from cooking the neighborhood. You know what I mean? We have a lot of Hispanic people living around here. And yeah. my dad said, You got to do a Mexican pizza. I said, Okay, done. <laughs> and um we did it. It's a an amalgamation of like lots of different cultures you know obviously it's an italian base you have the the pizza and um but the base we did a, a chimichurri which is actually argentinian yes but felt like it would work really well with the flavor profile so the base is a chimichurri then it's um light light cheese um and then the red zacatecas chorizo that's my absolute favorite from chori man it's wow. just got a phenomenal flavor profile and he does his burritos there which are really good but i think taking the product home and playing with it you can really like really understand the nuance and layers of flavor he has like the sprinkle of it on the pizza was just great so it's got the chorizo roasted corn mm -hmm. um and then we fire it like that and when it comes out it gets oh i'm sorry and jalapenos so jalapeno. chorizo roasted corn jalapenos mm -hmm. when it comes out it gets fresh cilantro and a drizzle of crema with some uh, cotija and cotija. Yep. Uh -huh. So lots, of, lots of cheeses in there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Sounds it's awesome. just like a food yeah. taco kind of, yeah. yeah. And then they gave us a choice of ovens that we could use either their electric oven, uh, two electric ovens and a deck oven and, and, a, and, a, and a kitchen oven. And then there was a wood fired oven, right? There was, was a wood fired oven. And I had only used basically our wood fired oven up to that point in the little uni. And so I was like, all right, well, just we'll, we're using the wood fired oven. You would think, mm -hmm. and, you know, and it was yeah. at, at, a, at a culinary school there with the, and you'd think they would have it yeah. fired up and they would have, they said yeah. they I was right totally there. picturing these big, yeah, I was picturing yeah. these big, you know, yeah. Napolitan style. Yeah. But it was fine. It, yeah, it didn't fire it up too well for me. And when I realized, I was like, oh, so I ran, grabbed some more wood and just like, tried to get it as hot as possible with like maybe like two hours left and it just didn't I, get I, there. I, I was uh, cooking inside it in, in an electric oven but I was looking out the window at the <laughs> oven that you were going to be cooking in and I think I went down there an hour or so before you were scheduled to, to bake and I was thinking 
oh my god this oven's not hot enough yet you know and i and i, yeah, I was telling yeah. somebody, you got to get this thing you know fired up and i i really was yeah. worried for you guys down yeah. there and, and then i was yeah. to my thing and my oven wasn't set hot enough either so that was part of my problem but so we yeah. we didn't you know we we ran into technical yeah. you know challenges but yeah. but uh and i was again, looking, I, I'm foolish enough to try it again, but like, yeah. <laughs> well, I, think that, 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 I, I don't that, think that anybody who, that, you know? people who do this a lot, the people who compete a lot, like at Pizza Expo, you, I don't know if you're coming to Pizza Expo next month, but uh, there'll be a lot of people competing. And the thing is that they mm -hmm. all have had war stories like this and everybody right. has had, especially the oven is the, always the biggest war story one of that. The oven right. let me, down, you know, and, uh, and right. they get better at each competition. It's better. So if you go back, you know, you'll know what you're up against and what you're dealing with. And uh, I think you, you'll you have a much better shot at winning. Yeah, and it's worth it entering these contests. For those people who are listening, who, you know, these contests are open to anybody who's, you know, professional, semi-professional. You can get in by submitting a recipe. And there's good prize money if you win. Yeah. And, and you get a trip to Napa. And you get yeah. to hang mm -hmm. out with some really cool pizza luminaries. And uh, it was yeah, a totally. fun few days together with everybody. They took yeah, us to definitely. a Mexican restaurant uh, that as a group. That's where we, you, we we all had dinner together, right? At mm -hmm. uh, at one of the at the Napa at the farm market in. Uh, uh, oh right, yeah. yeah, yeah. I forget yeah. the name of the market there, but it was it was anyway. The, a little market, yeah. It, mm -hmm. But but that category that you were in the cow mix category, it sounds like it was really perfect. You were perfectly situated for that category. You had access to great ingredients and a great concept, and got to get yeah. another shot. <laughs> Yeah, got to yeah, uh, and we've kind of been thinking of some some new pizzas too that we're gonna go come with, and uh, I think we kind of want to both. Well, last time we just entered the one pizza, assuming we can kind of come in as a team. Yeah, I entered us because I do a lot of that stuff. You yeah. know, the admin and I, I, I entered us just you know probably eleven thirty at night, the last minute. Right. <laughs> <laughs> After a pop up, we got home from a pop up, and I said, "We're not going to miss this opportunity." Like, right. you know, like falling asleep, putting thing in. Right. Uh, but yeah, so this year we will we'll both enter. And when, we'll... Yeah, and then yeah. they're like, "Okay," I I kind of passed the baton to Ahmad because he's much more of our pizza although and wanted you know to have mm -hmm. him make pizzas. But this year, I think we'll both we'll both okay. enter and see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why not? Why not? You and... Never know. Yeah, you never know. Uh, and and the judges, you know, the judges are going at first by the written recipes. You got to do for the people who are listening. If you enter, you can write your recipe out clearly and, you know, descriptively so the judges can get their mind around it because they're not going to make it until they've looked at all the recipes and then they're going to have you make it if they think it's good enough for you to bring you in for. It. So you got to get there. You got to get them to eat it with their eyes. And then uh, right. and so, uh, you know, why not enter more than one? Especially since you both have yeah. skills. In fact, John, if I'm not mistaken, you know, you were, as you said, you were had been a chef for many years before you all got married and were in this business together. You were like a private chef, weren't you, for for people in the film industry and things like that? Yeah, I was. I um I got into it um in my kind of mid twenties, I guess. And uh wasn't at first, I really didn't want to do it. I thought, I don't want to, I don't want to cook for these rich people. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't want to deal with all that. But I kind of fell into a really great position um, with Rick Rubin. He's really oh. a really phenomenal producer. Um, well, that's, and, a, good, that's uh, a good, a good uh, person to get connected with early on, you know? Yeah, yeah. He was very health conscious. And uh, I'm really, I, I have a lot in my arsenal in terms of, you know, food as medicine and things like that. And so my dad, it, he was my dad's client. My dad wasn't really into doing it. He's like, this is not my vibe. So <laughs> he kind of had me start doing it and doing the drop-offs. And then they pulled me in as an in-house chef. And um, I did, I feel like I got kind of a paid, uh, also self-taught in that time, but kind of a paid uh, education in a way because I was pretty <laughs> green when it went in, you know what I mean? And I just had to learn on the fly. I had to learn a lot. I had my experience from growing up learning the classics, but it was all new diets, all new, you know, right. but anyway, I really, you know, I dove in as I usually do with things and yeah. um, really into it. And then word of mouth really spread. And I started picking up a lot of different clients just by word of mouth. Um, and, uh, and that, you know, that sustained me for a long time. It was a good, really fun 
fun career and I got to travel with some clients and you know really learn to tailor flavors to each client's palate that's kind of a lot of what it's about when you were cooking right. for clients like that were you also having to oversee like the catering side of it did you have to order the plateware and all this kind of stuff or did were you just go, going in there and cooking and using their kitchens and their tools um, it really depended on the client, you know, because I've really done a lot of different people. Like I said, I did Rick Rubin. I did Mary J. Blige. She was pretty part time. Um, I did DJ Khaled. That was all drop off at the wow. Beverly Hills Hotel for months, just like six meals a day. I'd go drop them off to him. Um, what else did I do? A lot Kobe of athletes. Bryant after he retired. Yeah, I got into Kobe Bryant, um, Tristan Thompson. Eventually, my last client was Rajon Rondo, who, you know, became like a good friend and family, you know. So, so you could see we were into, into the sports world as well as the uh, film world. And then, and yeah. The and yeah, yeah. And then I did Diddy. That was probably the, the wildest one. <laughs> so uh, that was, that was crazy. Um, and I didn't, I didn't have to worry about, you know, any of the dishware, or anything like that. They'd get the highest quality of everything everything and I was in I was in charge of doing their business meetings when he wanted to close the deal because they had split the mm -hmm. split the anyway blah 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 nice. yeah. <laughs> but, 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 uh, well, but those are some pretty high profile clients which I'm just wondering yeah. now as you start starting to build your business you've you've paid your dues now the last few years you've established your brand you've got mm -hmm. a great reputation great uh success stories now and, and learning curves so mm -hmm. where's it all going and can some of these former clients of yours be you view them as potential investors to help you get maybe a brick and mortar are you looking in that direction at all or you want to stay in the yeah. catering sector? um yeah we are looking at a, a brick and mortar now we've we've been talking about it you know it's it's hard being in the wild you know just sort yeah. of like at, you know at it's raining right now here in california uh we there's been a couple pop-ups we've had to cancel recently because of the rain there's yeah. a you know, wind comes up, you know, we've got so many stories. We were at Smorgasbord last year and we've got a line full of people and our tent blew away. And, you people know. were still standing in line. That's what should be. I mean, there were customers holding it yeah. and people were just still down to go. They're, just like, They're like, cool, I'll have the, I'll have the Chicano. Like, yeah. And, and she's was looking just, at me like, what do we do? I'm it, like, we keep a, making pizzas. That's what we do. You we know? had a great day. We did yeah. really well. Um, so, so, but, ready to settle down and we we have been thinking about investors a lot of that's a learning curve to us because mm -hmm. you know we were in survival mode when we started this and and so now we're like in sustained mode and there, there's a lot to learn about it we don't want to get caught up with an investor who like you know changes the integrity of the product or, or the brand or the or... brand or you know like that's something we're worried about we're you know yeah. we're concerned yeah. about and we don't really know what a what a healthy profit sharing model looks like. That's something we're looking into and learning. And we're like talking to, you know, people we trust and just trying to, you know, bend people's ears. And luckily we, the community here is looking out for us and they're, yeah. you know, and they're, 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 they're asking the right questions of us and we're going out and trying to find the answers and hopefully soon. You know, we've we've been talking to a few people, and mm -hmm. we have some some things on the table that we need to work out. But yeah, mm -hmm. hopefully, really soon we'll we'll be in our own regular kitchen, you know, professional, uh -huh. and and be able to open our doors to people, yeah. you know, regularly as opposed to a couple times a week. You know, right. be able to provide things like our fresh pasta in a small yeah. retail area, and mm -hmm. you know, um, and we've created a gathering space on the street a lot. Right. <laughs> which I really love. And I hope to continue to do that yeah. from time to time. Mm -hmm. Um, but it'd be great to have a home base for that. It'd be great to have walls around us. Mm -hmm. We have a toddler, so this is a busy life we're living. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we definitely want to continue the catering. Um, we don't want to get caught up in the I feel like we've been brainstorming and we feel like there's a way to open a brick and mortar without getting sort of caught up in the sort of day-to-day, -day, you know, restaurant kind of lifestyle. Like, so we can do some catering, we can do some experiential dining, we can still go out on the street and pop up, you know, we can open the doors and, mm -hmm. and let people in from time to time. But so we're working on, on a, a, a business model that's, yeah. that's smart and yeah. that, that I think people are, people are going to enjoy and it's not going to like drain us and drive us crazy. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I grew up in the restaurant industry, so I'm not naive to like, yeah. you know, what it costs, what it takes. And I'm passionate about it on the same token. I think I think there is kind of a lot of a lot of people are following a kind of a newer restaurant model or food business model um, that isn't so, you know, you're open right. six days a week, you know, all of the time. You're just it drains a lot of money. So we want to create a system where everything is sort of supporting each other. The huh. catering is supporting the the location. The right. location is supporting the right. catering. And our pop ups are, you know, are mm -hmm. good advertisement for for the catering as well. You know, when they see us out on the street, they're like, "Oh, cool! Yeah, like, we want you to come to our house and do that too." And mm -hmm. so, yeah, so you're kind of trying to design a uh, a sustainable model that yeah. that right. they can work on without without burning you guys out. Do you, yes. would, do you currently, when you go out on a job now, do you currently just go to the two of you or do you have employees that you bring or and do you have a team of people that are already uh, training? Yeah, we do. We have a, a growing team and um, yeah, we kind of got lucky. Uh, uh, a restaurant in Long Beach kind of closed down and we were able to pick off a couple of their young cooks and <laughs> we got accident. By, yeah, completely by accident. Craigslist and, dad. Yeah. And um, you know, we, we, found a kid who was getting ready to go to culinary school, you know, right out of high school. And so we kind of brought him into the fold and yeah. another friend of ours who just happened to be looking for some work and we brought her into the fold. And so we've just kind of been, you know, yeah. making it work. And yeah. yeah, it got to a point last year, we, we we were able to do a 300 person wedding with, you know, a couple of uh, Gosneys and a, a little portable convection oven and, you know, mm -hmm. and, we had a full team of people and three grazing tables, three grazing half tables. hors d'oeuvres, yeah. pizzas, salad. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. definitely like um, our biggest yet. So it was really fun and exciting to get that under our belt. And, um, you know, it went smoothly, which was great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I yeah. definitely but it's interesting it how, how, you know, all of your past experience kind of comes full circle for you with, with your, your hotel and food and beverage experience, your, uh, you know, uh, private chefing, everything to do in a, a big event like that. You already were ready. You know, you were you were pre-trained yes. to jump into that breach. Yeah. That's, Absolutely. So yeah. So I think it sounds like yeah, describing is. it that you've got you know all the pieces in place, plus you know uh, a, a, a not not only a good idea for you know a plan to create a business plan, which is so key as to having a you know well thought out plan. But also having, you know, advisors that you can go to, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's financial advisors or, you know, uh, you know, just client, uh, references, you know, to help you yeah. just put all the put it all together. And uh, it, it's cool when it happens because not everybody has a story that progresses this positively. Yeah. You know, by now, yeah. Yeah, most of the projects that start out like yours have crashed and burned already. And they're yeah. and, and they're never going back in the pool again, you know. Right. Oh, no, it's true. Yeah. You kind of got through it all. There's and... a lot of hanging in there for sure, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Really and we're, we're not out the woods yet. Like this, this winter has been kind of rough for us. It's been pretty slow. We're kind of waiting till mid March. We've got a couple of big events coming then, and then uh -huh. into the spring it starts to roll. And so we're like, all right, we just got to get through this next, you know month here and, and we'll go to the drawing board work on right. that stuff, you know yeah but so yeah so it's 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 still a lot of work and there's still a lot of uh danger out there for us i guess you'd say but you know we we've been doing it now for enough years and we've gotten through enough of those obstacles that we're confident that yeah whatever comes up we can handle it mm -hmm. so, well will well, you guys be... experience as part of our you know our journey you know it's like exactly. it's Miller yeah. Butler. It's our family. It's our life. It's our everything, you know? Exactly. I mean, you're, you know, you, well, we always like to kind of put the frame this in the, in the, the sense of our quest, what each of us are on a quest of some sort. Right. How would yeah. you define your quest? What is the, what is the quest that you guys are on together? Oh, okay. oh good question. Um, yeah. Our quest is like, we're building family and business. I feel like that's kind of, I feel like we're building for our family, with right. our family, yeah, you right. know, we have a toddler, we want her to have something, you know, have, and uh, mm -hmm. additionally, for and with our community. I think that's really probably the biggest thing for us is mm -hmm. um, community has just been so extraordinary. I didn't even know community could be like this. Yeah, they yeah. Have just 
I mean, I became pregnant early on in these pop-ups. Women would come. I honestly, like, I've been kind of a career woman, so I was not, I was like, what do I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come with like, just how are you doing? And like, bring me, you know, products and hand me down blankets and, blankets and just the love, like honestly gets me emotional. It's mm. just extraordinary. So we want to continue to just pour into the community, create a space for pizza to connect pizza people to connect over food because that's really something we've seen the mm -hmm. power of is just bringing together through people together through food mm -hmm. you know yes. we uh -huh. had our pop-ups would have literally every walk of life you know mm -hmm. and and all of a sudden they're hanging out together right so yeah that's i would say that's yeah, that's kind of our mission yeah like you know one day we want to have like at you know at Giuseppe's place or whatever you know a picture of me and Jelana up on the wall and they're like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my uncle right there he started this fifty years ago and look at us now you know yeah or, yeah yeah you're gonna have a a legacy yeah. You know? yeah. exactly yeah. 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 yeah and it's really cool being yeah. part of that sort of um of that legacy of of mom and pops who you know just do whatever it takes to like keep the family going and keep everybody fed and, and build a community. And, yeah. you know, yeah, it's been a really amazing experience and quest so far. So, yeah. well, so if you, I don't amazing. know if you're, I don't know what your schedule's uh, like in March, but if you're not booked on from March 19th to the 21st, that's when the pizza expo is happening. In yeah. Yeah. We actually are booked. Uh, we, we're no, a little can't, so you're not going to be able to come. Yeah. yeah. We definitely wanted to go. We went last year was our first year and it was really, we didn't really know what to do. You know, we were just sort of yeah. there, like seeing and usually the, the, the connections and the community part happens on your second visit, you know, because you've met right. yeah. and, the, and then you reconnect and that's when it starts to happen. And suddenly right, you were, yeah part of a, a big a big extended family you know beyond yeah. even the one you have at home so uh that's where we found out about the california cheese that's it that's what we, we went found to their out booth about it. and right. they said oh you should enter and kind of explained it to us and i was like cool i'll see you in napa and he was like "Ooh, confident <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is pretty good you 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 when so you spoke into existence <laughs> yeah, yeah. you manifested it is that what they say yeah. now <laughs> yeah well yeah. well congratulations on on everything that you've accomplished so far Congratulations for surviving the you know the the the, the early days and and yeah. uh, and it's growing and it's starting to like take shape. So we're going to be tracking it. We're going to stay in touch. Hopefully, we will get you back from time to time to give us updates and uh, your, your progress Love reports. Them, yeah. Love that. And especially when you get if you if you move it into the you know into the brick and mortar, uh, you know I could just see you guys having like a ranchero somewhere with 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 patios and outdoor dining. <laughs> And open fires and all sorts of other stuff. I get yeah, to speak really, it into existence. You, I love it. it into existence. Yeah. <laughs> so we're it. excited to connect with, you know, more people in this, com this pizza community, you know, yeah, know? like, yeah. but, and learn more. We've got a long way to go. We've got so. a lot to learn. Lots it's to exciting. Learn. You know, you, you, you've had accomplished a lot and yet your journey is still in the early stages. So look what, how much has happened in such a short amount of time yeah. for you. Yeah. I think that that's, uh, you know, kind of how what everyone's dream is when they get into this. There's so many other people that have similar aspirations that you have and they want to know, well, what was it like for you? And I, you know, you'll be able to share those stories with them. But uh, the takeaway for me from this conversation today is how important it was that you guys did it together and held together and brought, you know, your two talents together in a way that created something bigger than the sum of the parts and, and that you endured the hard days and, are, are still standing to tell the story and to keep telling the story. Yeah, yeah. That's it, yeah, for sure. So thanks yeah. so much for, for joining us today on Pizza and sharing, you know, your story. I will look forward to seeing you. If not, I won't see you in Vegas, uh, but it may be, who knows, maybe I'll see you in, in Napa again. Hey, who knows? Maybe, but, you never know. They're only now, for those people who are just listening, I think it may not be too late. The, the, the uh, uh, applications for entering are going to happen any day now, but also they close quickly. So right. jump on if you want to enter, and if if you do, then maybe you'll see uh, Ahmad and Jelana out there, uh, or me if we if we're lucky yeah, enough. Yeah. To get there. And uh, right. also, I still have to get permission from my wife to be even enter <laughs> because because it's disruptive too. When you go, I mean, look, you have to give up right. some days of work to go out there, and and it's like an investment right. in business as well. Especially if yeah, you don't yeah. get prize money, then you're then it's a real investment. Right, right. right. It's a real investment, oh, right. We know <laughs> what that's like. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's all part of the game. 
And so, yeah. um, so I'm glad you're part of this, you know, pizza community. And uh, I look forward to interacting with you, you know, over the next number of years as you grow your your business, your family, and in your community. Thank so, you. Joanna Miller, Ahmad Butler, thank you. Uh, for those who want to keep track, it's uh, it's the Miller Butler SP on Instagram, or go uh, look at, you have a website, right? Miller Butler. Uh, yeah, MillerButler.com. MillerButler.com. Miller yep. So keep track. And uh, if you're out in the, in the, in the Southern California area, you know, let them know. And if you're living out there and are looking for, um, for a caterer, give them a call. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having us. My pleasure. Great to see you. And I look forward to seeing you again. And thank all of you for joining us on Pizza Quest. We'll see you on the next episode.